It's a big day. I mean, it's the first time ever done in the history of the planet. It's only taken 10 years of our teams, about 50 people, 10 years to do it. Well, we just introduced you to Dr. Jeffrey Beal and took you behind the curtain as he performed the first of its kind medical procedure. It takes a village to do what these UCLA doctors did and will no doubt change countless lives. And we're joined now in studio live by Dr. Beal. He's a professor at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA and the director of the UCLA Kidney Transplantation Exchange Program. We're so happy to have you. And first of all, thank you for letting me come along for the ride. Arudabe, thank you. I mean, that segment was Perfect. Just if you guys could just play that on loop. <laughs> okay, uh, well, maybe we can we can figure out how to do that. that so great. obviously these medical terms they sound really complicated, mm -hmm. right? But this is really really life changing for anyone who's had a kidney transplant and potentially any kind of organ transplant. Yeah, I mean they're on these immunosuppression meds, so it's it's glorious for them if they can come off of these medications because these anti-rejection or immunosuppression medications, they're nasty things. So they can cause cancer, heart disease, diabetes, infections. But if you get the donor's stem cells, so the same donor that donated the kidney transplant, if you can ask that same donor to then donate their stem cells, and if those stem cells engraft, then the recipient can come off these medications. And also, another thing I learned just reporting this story that I wasn't aware of is that the actual drugs that allow the organ to be transplanted and survive in the body can kill the organ, and then you need another transplant. Yeah, ironically, you're taking these medications to uh, prevent the organ from getting rejected, but those same medications are harmful to the organ. So uh, they choke out the kidney. So over time, they're preventing the kidney from rejecting, the kidney transplant from rejecting, but at the same time, they're toxic to the kidney. So a kidney transplant typically only functions for about 15 years, 20 years. Uh, so by doing this, theoretically, their kidney transplant should last for the rest of the recipient's life because they're not on those medications anymore. It's, it's a really big deal, and I know this was really suspenseful. I mean, there's yeah. so much money and time and cooperation from patients that went into this. How are you feeling now? Oh, I mean, outstanding because uh, you don't know going into it if it's going to work. And then, like I said in the clip, it's like we'll never get that time back. It's like you invest 10 years on one thing. It's like an Olympic athlete or something like that. They train for 10 years and then they maybe trip on the hurdle and you don't do it. And so that's kind of what our team did. We went down the road hoping it would work. And yeah, it worked. Beautiful chimerism, beautiful engraftment. And Micah is about to come off his last little bit of medication. He's on 0.5 milligram of a dose a tacrolimnus. He's almost off. He'll be off all his meds next month and then he'll be free just like you and me. It's incredible. And I mean, it took their cooperation too because they didn't know if it was going to work. They trusted you. Absolutely. And his brother Dylan, who donated a kidney to him over a year ago, we had to call Dylan back and say, hey, the kidney was great, but how about you donate your stem cells? Yeah. And so we had to put Dylan through a donor stem cell. Uh, he had to take these powerful drugs, get his stem cell donation. Um, so it's a lot on the donor to come back again over a year later and then donate the stem cells. And not um, only that, he got COVID when he came back the second time. That part didn't make it into the story, but when yeah. he came all the way from the East Coast uh, to do this, he was on the drugs, he gets COVID, he gets sequestered in a hotel room, has to go back and come back again. So it's a really big journey for these yeah. people. Yeah, so kudos to Dylan. Um, he not only donated his kidney, but he also donated his stem cells to his brother. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, and they took a chance. Like you said, they took a risk on the whole thing and it worked. So what now? Are you working on other patients? Uh, this is obviously not available everywhere in the country for people who see this, who have had a transplant or are getting a transplant who want this. Right. This is only available right now for people who have had a kidney transplant from a well-matched brother or sister. So if you're walking around right now with a kidney transplant and it was your brother or it was your sister that donated a kidney to you, you could then ask that same brother or sister to come back and donate their stem cells. Uh, we just did another patient and it was four years ago. So it was wow. a gentleman whose sister donated a kidney to him four years ago. They went through this about two months ago. Uh, so the sister came back four years later, donated her stem cells, and we should find out if they have engraftment in another week. So you're off to the races. You're off and running. We're, we're rolling. Well, we appreciate uh, getting to ride along with you on this oh, journey. Man. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, KCAL, CBS, Ruta Bay. Thanks for getting the word out. We appreciate your time, and thanks for coming in this morning. And if you'd like to learn more about the program, check out our website, kcalnews.com, and click Scene on TV.